So what we have here is we have this 3D object composed of parts that don't all have the same density. And we need to find the centroid of this object, or the center of mass, or the center of gravity. It's all the same thing. That's what we're going to find. So I've gotten the steps of what we're going to be going over all written out down in the description. You can check that out. And if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So as it says down in the steps, the first step is to establish a coordinate system. That's already done and given to us in the, in the problem. Uh, and the next step is to split our object up into its component parts. Now each one of these component parts needs to have the same density throughout that part. And we're given this um, example problem where each one of these parts has a different density. So it's kind of already broken up into its component parts for us. And each one of their densities is labeled down here. And so the next step is we need to find the coordinates of the centroid of each one of these component parts. Now, we are going to label them out over here. We have our first object, number one, and we're going to find its centroid, which the coordinates of its centroid is going to be in the x direction, it is going to be in the middle of this rectangle or triangular prism, which is the width is 20 millimeters, so half that it's is 10. So that's the x coordinate of the center or the, of the centroid of this object. And then in the y direction, it's going to be one third away along the base of the triangle away from this right angle corner and it is 60 millimeters wide so one third of 60 is 20 so its y coordinate of the center of mass is 20 and you should note that x tilde y tilde and z tilde are these x y and z coordinates of the centroid of each individual component so now for the z direction similarly it's going to be one third way along the height of the uh, of the triangle away from this right angle corner. So one third of 30 is 10, but we also need to add the height of two and blocks two and three onto that, and that's 20 plus 40 plus that 10 comes out to be 70. So there's for number one, and then for number two, once again, in this X direction, it's going to be half of the width of it, which is 20 again. So half of that is 10. For in the Y direction, the half of the width of number two is half of 60, so that's 30. And then half of the height is 40 divided by two, which is 20 plus the width of block three, which is also 20. So that comes out to be 40. So there's the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the center of mass for block number two. And then for three, it's going to be halfway um, in the X direction, or in the X direction, the Y direction, and Z direction. And so that's going to be 30, 30 and 10. So now that we have the x, y, and z coordinates of the centroid, which once again is x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde, um, we need to find the what w is. Now w in these equations represents weight. And but you'll notice that our densities, when we multiply them by volume, will give us a mass. So the reason why it doesn't really matter whether it's a weight or a mass is because there's a weight and a mass multiplying by everything on both the top and bottom. So the units just cancel each other out. So when we're dealing with the metric system, often we're given um, the mass of objects when we're given the density. So we have the mass, we're going to be getting the mass from these densities but if we were dealing with the SI units, 
we would be giving given it in the density in pounds per volume and now pounds is a unit of force weight is also a unit of force and so usually when you're dealing with SI units you're dealing with weight and when you're dealing with um, the metric system you're going to be dealing with mass so in this case we need to find the mass and to do that we need to find the volume of each so we can multiply it by the mass or we can multiply it by the density and get the mass so finding the volume of number one it is the area of this triangle multiplied by its width so half the base times by the height uh, multiplied by the depth is 60 times by 30 times by 20 times by one half that comes out to be 18,000 cubic millimeters for two it's going to be the width times the height times the depth and that comes out to be 48,000 cubic millimeters and for the volume of three it's going to be 60 times by 60 times by 20 which is 72 thousand cubic millimeters now that we're going to find our the mass of each one of these we need to multiply multiply it by the density but you'll notice that our density is given to us in units of um, megagrams per cubic meter and we have all of our volumes calculated in cubic millimeters so we either need to convert these into cubic meters or we need to convert these into units with cubic millimeters on the bottom and I think the easier one is going to be this way and I'll show you why so when we when you convert it there are 1 billion cubic millimeters in one cubic meter and so to convert this into cubic or megagrams per cubic meter that would equal 2.7 times by 10 to the negative 9 megagrams per cubic millimeter. But if we were to convert this into, say, um, milligrams per cubic millimeter, there are 1 billion milligrams in 1 megagram. And so that would go back to being just 2.7 milligrams per cubic millimeter. So over here, we're just going to change all of these units into milligrams per cubic millimeter. And now that we have that done, we can multiply these numbers by the volume and to get the total mass which we will use in each one of these equations we'll replace the w with like say an m variable and that will be our mass so 2.7 times by 18,000 comes out to be 48,600 milligrams or yeah 48,600 milligrams which also equals and we're gonna now we put these in milligrams, but I'm actually just going to write them in grams for the sake of less writing. So these comes out to be 48.6 grams, 48,000 millimeters cubed multiplied by 5.7 milligrams per cubic millimeter comes out to be 273.6 grams and 72,000 cubic millimeters times by 7.8 milligrams per cubic millimeter comes out to be 561.6 grams. So once again, it doesn't matter whether these are in grams or milligrams or megagrams, the units are just gonna cancel out um, in each of these fractions, leaving us with just units of distance, which is what the units of z tilde r and therefore that's what the units of 
are x bar, y bar, and z bar, which I didn't mention in the beginning, but x bar, y bar, and z bar are the x, y, and z coordinates respectively of our entire object. The coordinates of the centroid of the entire object. So now we can plug all of this information into our equations. So we have the x bar is the sum of the x tildes, the x coordinate of the center of mass of each one of these objects multiplied by the respective masses. So that'll be 10 times by 48.6 plus 10 times by 273.6 plus 30 times by 561.6 and all that divided by the sum of the masses. And so that's 48.6 plus 273.6 plus 561.6. And that comes out to be 22.7 millimeters. So there's your X coordinate of the center of mass, center of gravity or centroid, whatever you want to call it, of this object. It's 22.7 millimeters in this direction away from the origin. Now finding y bar and z bar is the exact same process, so I'm not gonna go through it again, but when you plug that into your calculator, you end up getting that y bar is 29.5 millimeters and z bar is 22.6 millimeters. So if we look at this, um, this coordinate, 22, 29, 22, isn't even going to be on this object. It's going to be some way, a little ways from the wall of these, since each of these are a thickness of 20 millimeters. And the X bar of, so the X coordinate of the center of mass of this is going to be like 2.7 millimeters away from this wall. And so it's going to lie somewhere out here in, from this object. So there's a pretty good example problem of how to find the um, centroid of a 3D object that doesn't have a constant density. And if you found it helpful, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments and I'll reply to them. I also appreciate the feedback. Um, I've got my website up and going, gostudentengineering.com. You can check that out. It's got all these videos up on there, plus a little bit more stuff like descriptions written out, more steps and stuff. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.